Welcome to The Ladies' Room. I'm your host, Judy McDowell, and my guest today is Stephen Ringel, the Executive Director of the East Hampton Chamber of Commerce. And you have been doing such wonderful things. That festival was so incredible in the spring, and I hear you're going to do another one. Thank you. Yes, we are. We're really excited to have the first fall festival, create the East Hampton Fall Festival. And for the first time, the village is letting us have something in the park. Herrick Park? So we're not going to be on the street. We'll actually be in Herrick Park, uh, in the little area by the gazebo and the square park. Uh -huh. And we'll have a ha pumpkin carving contest, costume parade. It'll be a true fall. October 21st. October so 21st. Like a Close enough days, to Halloween. Yeah, 10 days before Halloween, everybody. Can, Halloween rehearsal event. Exactly. Get right. ready. We'll have arts and crafts, the children's. East End Children's Museum will be there doing hands-on science. We'll have bluegrass to blues music going all day. Now, you're going to have to take up a wide swath of that park. How far We're back can you go? We're just going to use the front section, the square, yeah. all, the front square off of Newtown Lane. So you're not, not going to have not, as many booths as you have? Half as many. Mm -hmm. Half the booths we'll have... Uh, we're going to have, for the first time, we're going to have a trapeze artist come and set up a whole aerial site. We'll have live trapeze and aerial exhibits going on all day. be fun to be able to set up zip lines, don't you well, think? You never know. God, I love yeah. zip lines so much. I, if, if it were at all possible to have zip lines from Manhattan to the Hamptons, of course, you could only use it in good weather. But, boy, you get here fast. I love and it'd be so too. much fun. We're trying to do something to bring everyone together at the end of the season now. Yeah. And have it be another community, fun, centered event. And I think it's going to be a good time. Oh, the weather's always beautiful in October. It's the best. Yeah. So you've been here for almost a year since you made that fateful phone call. It has been. It'll be a year in October. Uh -huh. What a year it's been. What a year it's been. And I feel like I, uh, I'm so lucky to live in this great, great village seen my first real season come and go now and experience that and that was exhausting and exhilarating and did you get to the ocean a bit i did we got to the beach quite a bit to play that's great and enjoyed every second of it it's warm right you're used to the california yeah. ocean and no that's freezing cold. water no freezing water it's yeah cold. and sharks in that water out there too yeah exactly yeah and the beaches that are extremely crowded we're really, True. even Main Beach at its yeah. busiest is not a Los Angeles beach. Do you know I've been out here since the 60s and I've never spent a day on, on Main Beach? <laughs> Isn't that weird? I, I've gone for fireworks, of course, but I've never spent a day on Main Beach. I always go to Town Line Road or mostly Beach Lane uh, because then I could walk to Georgica Pond and, and my daughter grew up swimming in Georgica Pond. I hope it's... Uh, I think they've cleaned up the algae now, and they they reopened yeah, they're it. They're working everything. on it. Yeah, but uh, it was really sad to see it get so polluted. So I think it's such an interesting story how you wound up here. You were working at the Chamber of Commerce in Nashville. Yeah, I was with the Tennessee State Chamber. Okay. Doing sponsorships and events and running a fairly large membership department. And we decided to move to East Hampton because we loved East Hampton. It had nothing to do with work. Yeah. You wanted to be someplace where there was culture and the ocean. and We wanted to be back at the ocean in a small town with a lot of culture and somewhere that would be great, great schools for our son to grow up. Yeah. And uh, close to a big city. And this just checked every box. And so you called the East Hampton Chamber of Commerce. To see what the opportunities were. Just looking for opportunities, knowing there had to be an interesting way to look for employment besides Craigslist. Ah, uh, true. Where, where are the jobs going to be listed? Who, it's a who you know, yeah. word of mouth situation. And they saw on the caller ID that I was calling from the Tennessee Chamber and said, hey, so what's, 
what do you actually do at the Tennessee Chamber? And when I started describing so membership and events and sponsorship and community events, and she said, the woman running the chamber here, Marina, you know, you do pretty much what I do. Well, and maybe. I'm retiring. I'm retiring. When are you coming? Oh, the same month. Well, come and meet the board. That's Synchronicity talk. at its best. Uh, more than I ever knew. Yeah. So now you've taken over things like raising the flag instead of the VFW doing it. We How did, did. that happen? We just did that. And uh, it's such an incredible honor and great experience. I got a call from the mayor's office who asked if I could help find that help find a replacement because the VFW who's been doing it for I think 40 some years if not longer they were tired they're aging and it's just <coughs> physically impossible for yeah. them to really do it anymore and they were sad they really wanted to uh -huh. and they asked for help and um, I talked to my friend who Glenn Vickers who runs the YMCA and the two of us decided we would take it on ourselves. Wow. So the, between the chamber and the Y, uh, we're out, the two of us are out there every morning on the, about a dozen holidays a year. We go out at 6 a.m. and put up the flags and line Main Street. And How there's mean, nothing quite line, like it. Line Main Street. Well, there's about uh, 70 flags from Guildhall to the other end of Main Street where the oh, flags go. Oh, all on. of the flags okay. on the holidays you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Oh, and they feel and, and <clears throat> the feeling of putting them up and seeing people in them, saying good morning to people and seeing them as you're putting it up and them yeah. waving and honking and it it feels so good. It's not work. It's Very an honor. American. It's really an honor. Huh? Uh, and then we pick them up and put them away and do it again. Now you you work on the uh, the chamber membership. Has it been growing? How? It has. We've been slowly building. We started with about 80 members. We're up to about 150. We have a mixer once a month, and we, are start, we have a brand new website where we're <clears throat> doing a lot of social media now. So we have a, the visitor center, and our website has a business directory where members are getting listed, and people, more and oh, more people want to participate in it. That's good. But, you know, the <coughs> people, the community is really strong. And it takes, um, it takes a team. Of, if we're all going to make the village work and make it a good place to work, a comfortable place to be employed, a great town, a village to live in that we want, it takes all the businesses joining together. Yeah. And that's the idea of the membership. Are you guys organizing any kind of a relief effort for uh, Houston and Florida? And the the Jewish Islands? Center of the Hamptons is collecting. We're, okay. we're coordinating with them. Uh huh. There. And how, how long is that going to go on? How, uh, and are there at certain hours people can bring stuff? They're open from 9 to 5, and the visitor center hours are a little less frequent. So we mm -hmm. want to, that, that's somewhere that from 9 to 5, they'll accept things uh, through the end of October. Okay, cool. And food and clothes or just clothing? Food and clothes. Food and clothes. Okay. So the events, all of the events that you have kind of lined up, all include a lot of family activities, a lot of stuff for kids. Yeah. You, you think that's really, really important? I think that we need, there's a lot of young families, and I think that that's a, a key to community and really keeping everything family-oriented. <clears throat> we'll do some... We just had a very successful golf the, the golf event, golf outing at the Maidstone yesterday. Oh. And that obviously was adults. But that uh. was a wonderful day. That was supposed to be a storm, and the, every, the sky parted. It was parted. 80 it was degrees. Gorgeous. You yeah. couldn't have asked for a nicer day to be out on the golf Wednesday, course. A Wednesday, on a weekday. Yeah. And we oh. had a wonderful group of people, and we all golfed all day long and had an award ceremony and wow. a wonderful event. And so what was it called, and how was it promoted? The East Hampton Classic. Okay. And, uh, so it's a new yearly thing? It's a new, new event. It was the thing? first year we did it in, in combination with the YMCA. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was... And at the Maidstone. Yeah, they were. They couldn't have been nicer and kinder great. to us. We appreciate the Maidstone support. And it was a great day, all day long, of, of fun and golf and community. Cool. How many people did you have? Uh, there was probably nine teams. 
Wow. So it was a great, was it was great. A great event. We had, uh, then we'll, we'll move on from that to the, just a couple of weeks, October 21st, will come around. Oh yeah, it'll be here like that, yeah. So we're looking actively to have, I, I want this, the booths that are there to not be the same booths you see. At you know, every I went event. to Sag Harbor and saw, oh, it's yeah. the same guy. There's a group that go everywhere, and yeah. it's great, and it's wonderful, but I think it'd be, we should be special and have, we have so many artists here yeah. who don't really do craft fairs, but who can come to ours, who will come down from their studio. So if there's anybody listening out there who would like to participate, just go to the Chamber website, easthamptonchamber.com. Mm -hmm. They can register, and we'd love to have them take a booth. And you will have posters around town? Yeah, there'll be the poster posters and flyers. Who's and doing your poster? Stations. Um, Peter is the artist from the East Hampton Star. Uh huh. And he, the same person, did our, our spring poster. Okay. Well, so they'll be up and everywhere very okay. soon. Okay, good. And we're going to have about 25 booths for nonprofits. Uh -huh. So we'll have everything from ARF to uh, Guild Hall and LVIS and all your favorite charities and nonprofits will be there to come visit, and it'll be a lot of fun. You Again, like very family oriented. Mm -hmm. And what are the hours? Ten in the morning. Ten to five. Ten to five. One day, October. Didn't 21st. you get like nine puppies adopted at the last yeah. fair? And uh, we did, and a lot of people to them that made the whole thing worth it. Yeah. But it was a line out the door the whole time, that just to see and touch the dogs, and it just makes everyone smile. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a good thing. And we also had the, hopefully we'll have the gimme shelter, animal shelter as well. So I think it's very exciting that you're turning the whole uh, Santa parade around and starting it at a normal time of day that people don't have to get up at yeah. 6.30 in the morning it's in the dark. It's going to be a and, whole day yeah. of activity. The street, Main Street and Newtown Lane will be dressed up for the holiday. We'll have carolers and each store is going to participate. It'll be a shopping stroll day. We'll have, each store will have hot cider, coffee, hot chocolate, little cookies and nibbles. There'll be character. Uh, Costume characters and period costume people walking around. That'd we'll be like another a, Halloween. Yeah, <laughs> just a really fun day to go and walk around and yeah. be in the village. And then at about 2.30, 3 o'clock, the parade will start and come down Newtown Lane and end at Hook Mill Windmill. Uh -huh. Santa, at the end, it will be sort of a Pied Piper, and we'll let's all follow Santa. We'll go to the windmill together. And when everyone gets to the windmill at maybe 4 o'clock, there'll be a community party there, a Christmas market with arts and crafts to look at, and about 10 or 15 costume car co uh, period costume people from the historical society. The windmill will be open. Okay. Uh, there'll be free hot chocolate and food, and Santa will be there. And that'll be our holiday party. At dusk, uh, the mayor will flip a switch, light the windmill, light Yay. the trees, a little actual lighting ceremony. There'll be music, and the party will continue like a, a, an evening Christmas market. Cool. Then the restaurants will stay open, and we'll have a, a, a whole night. Just like in October, when we do the 21st, we're going to do a special night where everything won't close at 7 o'clock. Uh -huh. the, the event will end at 5 o'clock, and everyone can leave into the village, and the restaurants will all have entertainment. They're going to have music in, in oh, the vets, so and music in like Roddy Hall, and music. East Hampton Fest. And it'll continue into the evening, and you can go yeah. walk down and grab a, a nibble or a glass of wine and visit with your friends and just check out the music in the stores. What about Mulford Farm and the Santa Parade? Won't they do... Dress up and do Christmassy stuff. Everybody, will, the whole historical society will, will participate, and it'll be a party like we something we haven't had before. Instead of just ending, it'll it'll end with a, to have a really nice holiday party to light, turn the lights on, and yeah, that's a great idea. It'll be to light to light our a chance our to just be together idea. for Christmas to feel like the season's yeah. starting all together. Yeah. So you're going to do a bed and breakfast tour this year. 
Yeah, that's one of the oldest. It's been going on for 60, this is the 64th year. Here in East Hampton? Yes, Never is. heard of it. Uh, the second week, the first week is the weekend of December is the parade on Saturday night. Uh -huh. the second Saturday, we do a tour of historic B&Bs and inns and everything from the Baker House to the Art, how, art uh, House out in Springs, the beautiful art hotel. Um, what is which very beautiful? few people know about. I don't know about exactly. it. Exactly. It's just a beautiful B&B &B that six artists have come in and everything from Tibetan, Tibetan to modern in the rooms. And there's a sculpture garden. When did it open? And it's been there for years. It's just no one knows. It's what is a little it called? Secret. The art, it's the art hotel. I wonder if it was, was it the lady that started it was her last name Cherry? Was it Mrs. Cherry's house? I, I think not, everybody just called it Mrs. Maybe. Cherry's house. I don't know. But what we'll do on that Saturday is all of the inns <clears throat> will be open. Uh -huh. They'll all have food and wine and beverages, and, and it'll be a walking tour. Everyone will, get, will check in at the, at the Hunting Inn. Uh -huh. And you just go on an adventure and see all the inns. that you. So nice because so many of them you can't go during the year. Yeah. But here you, they'll welcome everybody to come. Most will have, might have a room empty to go in and see what the rooms look like and just relax and take a tour. Take a nap. Take, why not? <laughs> Maybe stay for the night. I know they did it uh, on the North Fork. Uh, I've seen it advertised for, for it's been going on. several it years. Just I've hasn't never been. seen we it advertised to, in East Hampton. Yeah, well, we need to get the word out yeah. in a bigger and better way. So will you need volunteers for these events that yes, you're planning? Yes, if there's anybody who wants to help, just reach out to the Chamber of Commerce. OK, you need that. volunteers for all of the events, or mostly? Year round. We are now running a full visitor center for the village, mm -hmm. really a town village, in the village for East Hampton town. And the, the, the visitor center has all the information, pamphlets and maps, and of every attraction and museum and library in the village and the town. And people are coming in 10, 12, 20 a day asking questions. So wow, we need volunteers great. to help run yeah. the visitor center and staff it. And anybody who wants to help, we'd love to have. OK. Hmm. Um, how was it partnering uh, with the Ellen Hermanson uh, Foundation for the uh, Night of Enchantment? What a Gala. wonderful group. Uh, Absolute. Julie Ratner and her crew yeah. are spectacular. She's amazing. So much energy. Professional. So much energy. Such wonderful people. And and what a better cause could there be for us to help? Yeah. Uh, raise money for it was very successful. We raised over hundred thousand dollars. Wow. We had a wonderful night at the Topping Rose. We had entertainment from the amazing Kreskin, who. Uh, Bending spoons and things. Uh, mind reading, America's foremost mentalist. He was on Johnny Carson 64 times. Yeah, I remember and from the time I was at 83 child. years old. He was spectacular. Everybody loved it. Full of energy. Put on a great show. Did he blow people's he minds. He did. He really did. And then we left and went to the barn and had dancing and dessert and into the night. And it was a very fun, successful event. And that's. Well, direction I'd like to start doing more of, like we, we did the golf tournament with the YMCA, partnering with groups where we can help yeah. bring the business community to pr promote these events and put on sales. And we're working closely with the film festival in October to incorporate more of a music, uh, movie themes into each store and put some posters up and have sales and maybe put. Yeah. Uh, put outfits together from famous movies or yeah, something. Yeah, there were more sales. Uh, pe some people just can't resist a sale. Well, and, it's uh, fun. Just and to then all the merchants. Celebrate the film festival better. together. And it's, yeah. well, it's a great event, one of the great events we have. Dinner dances. Our parents used to go to dinner dances all the time, and our generation loved to dance, and there's nowhere to dance. So no, but we are starting the big project the Chamber of Commerce has coming down the line. It was, it's a year out because of the scale. Is The fall festival will always be in this small part of the park. That's our, our neighborhood, village, fall fest. Mm -hmm. But we are also looking to produce and create the East Hampton J Art and Jazz Festival, Jazz wow. and Art Festival, that's going to be on the scale of um, the Newport Jazz Festival. 
the Montreux Jazz Festival or the uh, New Orleans Jazz Fest. What, where would you where do we, it? We're, we're going to be, be on using that scale. We'll be using the large part of Herrick Park where the playing okay. fields are. We can Seems fit. Seems like you would need the airport. That's a really big space. It's beautiful. We can fit five to seven thousand people there. Wow, that would um, be incredible. It'll be a one day, ten to five, ten mm -hmm. to six festival that when over, the village will come alive. And we'll have world class musicians. Uh, and oh, you're talking about dancing. I, my first thought was to have a big band. I would love to have the Count Basie big band play for two or three hours and, and have. Swing band. And have. Um, uh, we have so we're blessed with so many gifted singers and artists who yeah. live here that if people could come and just sing one song, yeah, we can have a lot of special guests singing. A live like jam, yeah. And maybe it'd be possible to set up a dance floor in front and have a tea dance to the big band and have people actually dancing. Yeah, I think you would need a need to have a floor for you people know. to dance because yeah. people will want to dance. Yeah, I think it could. And then if people are sitting around on, on, on beach chairs and people standing in front of them dancing. That would be good. The um, uh, park in Southampton, Aguam Park, every summer, like every Wednesday night, has some. Uh, they always set a um, uh, what do you call it with the tin, when they uh, steel drum. Steel drums. Yeah, the they would do the reggae band, and they would have a bluegrass band, and and um, when our daughter was little, we went every Wednesday, and and it was just the park was packed. Well, and we have so a beautiful park. We have a gazebo. Yeah. We have a great place that that has the long-term parking lot and the and the uh, and the sure. regular parking lot right around it. There's bathrooms. It's a beautiful park. One is a step at a time. There's never been a festival or anything like what we're going to do in October in the park. This is like the street fair was the first. This is the first since the park's been the park. Yeah. That we've been allowed to have. There'll be a big children's area. There's the playground that's there. But there'll be a jumping castle. There'll be a big slide. There'll be a climbing wall. We have the trapeze. We'll have a stage with music. All of these things will have uh, arts and crafts and the nonprofits and the pumpkin carving contest, the costume parade. It's just uh, a, a new thing. And it, once we do it once, we can see how it goes. And it would yeah. be great to have music once a week in the park. It would. Yeah. I think people would really gather yeah. during the summer. It summer would concert. A, a like concert every Wednesday series. night. Yep. It would be, be wonderful. Me, it would be really wonderful. And it would bring a lot of people into shop. And it would bring, it would keep everything alive, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Are you going to be partnering with other nonprofits to do? Like think I'd like to do more of it. I, I would. I think we'll have to spend, we'll have the winter to start preparing. And yeah. I think the model of, it, it's, there are so many nonprofits. And if everybody just does their own benefit for themselves, I think it's more Spreads community it spirit. It thin, yeah. There's too many events. It, yeah. I think it just is in the spirit of true community and being together. Let's work on events together and raise money for a bunch of us all at once. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think I like that model. It's, it's and, worked. Yeah. And we can be a conduit to the business community to help promote the events through the business and, and keep the village. The more we can keep it alive, the more stores will want to stay open and not shut down, if we yeah. can keep more year-round stores. Yeah, more foot tra traffic in the town. It, it's a chicken and egg thing. There's nobody here, so we close. Yeah. Well, there's nobody here because the stores are closed. So who, yeah. you know, we have to keep these events going every little while. I'd like to really get people to understand that we are a winter wonderland and how beautiful the winter in East Hampton is spectacularly gorgeous. It is. It and really is. We, the inns are empty. There's not a, there's empty hotel rooms. The stores and the restaurants need a little more business, and we could promote ourselves a little outside the community, even around Long Island, to come check out East Hampton. Yep. Come visit us. Yep. So the last time you were here, did you tell me that your father was one of the founding members of the Magic Mountain? Uh, it's the in Magic LA? Castle. Magic Castle. And the Magic Castle, we, we touched on it, but not much. The Magic Castle is the only private club in the world for professional magicians. 
It's a 130-year-old mansion in the foothills of Hollywood. Yeah. Started in the early, about 1962. And my father was one of the founding members. And I grew up from a tiny kid. You were three when he first put you on stage, uh, the right? first time on stage was three years and old. And I tried to get you to do a magic trick today. Well, well. I got here. That was a magic yeah. trick. <laughs> that was a magic trick. And, uh, uh. Next time. There'll be a, we'll, we'll figure something out. Yeah. But I think at the um, October 21st, East Hampton Fall Festival, there will be an appearance of Magic Steve, and there'll be a Magic Yay. Show. Yay, and I think it'd be a great idea for the chamber to, to, to sponsor magic lessons for children. I think it's a great thing for children to learn, to learn magic. And it's a it, great skill. It just, it just opens up their imagination and their It and does. Skill it builds self-confidence. Yeah. It's great for dexterity and manipulation. Yeah. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. That's... I was like every other kid that just loved to do it as a little kid, and I just didn't stop. I, mean, I just kept going. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, life is magic. That's how it is. And uh, it's um, magical that we got this show in today, for sure. Thank you so much for Thank inviting Thank you so me. much for coming. Thanks for doing this show. And um, remember, everyone, come to the Fall Festival in Herrick Park, October 21st, 10 to 5. And get ready for that Santa parade. That's going to be fabulous. Yeah. Thank you so much. Stephen Thank Ringel, you. Executive Director of the East Hampton Chamber of Commerce. And please volunteer. <laughs> Thank you for watching The Ladies' Room. We'll see you next time. Bye.